with a panel of small business owners here in Halifax. And these folks have persevered through the pandemic and found ways to alter their business models and their offerings to meet challenging customer needs. And we're excited to hear from them now on how they can, how we can better support small businesses as we head into the winter months and our shopping habits continue to evolve. So please join me in first welcoming our moderator, Michelle Pevron. Michelle is the Director of Corporate Governance and Audit at the Halifax Port Authority. And Michelle has had a varied career in the last few years. Uh, she was uh, uh, seconded to the uh, Department of Business and Transportation Infrastructure in the provincial government. Uh, and uh, prior to that was at the Port Authority where she was Director of Strategy and Corporate Secretary. So Michelle, please join me. Let's see if you magically appear. And there you are. And you're on mute, but there you are. Oh, off mute. You're good. Thank you, Pat. Over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And I have the pleasure today of introducing three local business owners, some of whom I'm sure you may know personally if you've been into Cyclesmith or the Garden Food Bar or to Liquid Assets. These might be familiar faces to you. If they're not people that you know, I'll just take a minute to introduce the three of them and then we'll launch into a Q&A. So our three panelists today for the local business perspective are Andrew Feenstra. Andrew is the owner of Cyclesmith and has been in the hospitality industry for over 30 years. And 2020 turned out to be a record year for Cyclesmith. Uh, Andrew credits that to their preparation and embracing technology. And Cyclesmith strives to offer best-in-class hospitality and takes their cues from the best-in-class businesses from both inside and outside of their industry. And second, we have Korosh Rad, and Korosh is the owner of the Garden Food Bar. Now, he had interesting timing in that in February 2020, he assumed ownership of the Garden Food Bar in downtown Halifax, just before the pandemic hit. So recognizing the challenges of rebuilding an independent restaurant during COVID, he is channeling his community building background to serve high quality food and innovative beverages along with extensive arts and music programming. And third, we have Lisa Oley. She is the general manager of Liquid Assets of Nova Scotia. You may be familiar with this store in the departure lounge of the Halifax Stanfield Airport. So it's a unique store that opened in April of 2016 and is recognized internationally for its design and retail model. And in regular times, uh, the sales per square foot of liquid assets are among the highest in the province for retail alcohol. And Lisa herself has over 35 years of business management experience before jumping into liquid assets. So welcome to all three of you. And we're going to start now a Q&A about your perspectives, your experience during the COVID-19 pandemic. So. I'll start first with Lisa. So Lisa, can you tell us in general, overall, how did the pandemic impact your business operations? That's a great question. Uh, we were impacted almost immediately because flights stopped almost immediately. So we saw an, uh, a change on the 13th of March when flights stopped going. There was a bit of a surge when people were trying to get home and then on the 21st of March, we had to close completely um, while the airport shut from tens of flights an hour to six flights a day. Um, so it was an immediate impact on our business. Thanks, Lisa. What about Korosh? Can you tell us generally how things changed before we jump into some anecdotes about each of your experiences? Well, we were just coming off the uh, slow months of February, getting ready for uh, uh, you know March and getting ready, for getting our patio ready. Um, and on March 15, I sat here and issued uh, 17 uh, record of employment for the for the staff that got laid off. And immediately we had to switch our model to online uh, and, uh, take out and delivery. Um, so yeah, that was a very quick shift that we had to make. Make and 
three months of closure, um, it, it was difficult for sure, but we, we managed to reopen in, on June 5th. Um, and now coming to uh, Monday this week, laying off 29 people yet again. So it's been an interesting time. A roller coaster ride for sure. So I'm sure we'll hear some more details about that in a minute. Andrew, can you tell us generally what your experience, your business has been at Cyclesmith over the last number of months? Yeah, we were, we were very lucky uh, to be able to stay open the entire time. Um, and so actually things went very, very well for us. Uh, as far as all the preparation that we had to do, that was the, 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 the amount of work that was involved, whether it was cleaning and the unknown. That, that really was what changed our business. And obviously there's lots of things that we did that we can get, uh, we can get into more for sure. Okay, so thank you. That gives everybody a quick snapshot of, uh, of what the reality has been for your businesses. So to go down one level, I'm curious since this summit today is regarding road to recovery, when you look back and look at major shifts in your business, major lessons learned, maybe regrets as John was just speaking about. Can we start there with uh, a couple of examples from each of you of how you shifted and some of the key lessons you've learned in your business? So let's start again with Lisa. Um, we've always had an online presence. Uh, from the time that we opened, we were, and primarily we were offering you could order in advance and pick up on your way through the airport. Um, because of interprovincial trade barriers, we can't ship outside of Nova Scotia other than to Manitoba. So it was primarily a pickup operation, but we did have some experience with online. Um, by the 11th of April, we started doing deliveries, and that very first day we ended up doing 20 deliveries around HRM. So it was a, it, our, our customers embraced that and we found new customers almost immediately for delivery service uh, while st other stores were closed or while people didn't feel comfortable going out or while we were being told to stay the places home. So we, we changed to uh, a delivery model on the 11th of April. We peaked at about 50 deliveries uh, a day, three days a week in mid-May to early June. Uh, and then uh, once things opened up again within the province, we went to two days a week. Um, we're down to one, one delivery a week now around HRM, East Hants, uh, and we were going we're gonna to go up to twice a week starting next week again. So. so while we're still with you though, Lisa, I wonder while you're talking about how you shifted to deliveries, um, can you tell us, was that a substantial effort? Were you able to quickly make that change? You know, how challenging was that to shift? I guess my advice to anyone would be do it and work out the kinks afterwards. Um, so we jumped into deliveries pretty quickly. Uh, another, um, another opportunity is to find someone who has a like business or a like product, um, something that's complementary and kind of team up with them. So Ironworks Distillery in Lunenburg started making a hand sanitizer uh, as soon as the pandemic started and we were doing their deliveries as well as ours. So mm -hmm. those kinds of opportunities did open up. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, thanks Lisa. Uh, Korosh, can you tell us a bit about how you shifted your business, primary lessons learned, Good, bad. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the most important thing was jumping into, we didn't stop. The, the day that we figured out there's gonna be a closure, um, I, following the news around the world, I recognized that it's going to be a long call. It's not going to be two weeks, three weeks. We didn't stop. The next day we showed up with uh, myself and our chef, um, came up with a game plan of how to take a sit down dining restaurant to take out the delivery service. Um, within a week we were online on our own uh, platform. Uh, we, Research a few of them. Um, so very quickly, we managed to go to an online uh, take on a delivery. Um, as I also stood, uh, I became a barista myself. So we started selling coffee to go as well. Um, so yeah, I learned how to become a barista. Um, but I think that was kind of the more obvious side of it that you need to switch uh, rapidly. The not so obvious part of it was a learning uh, lesson for myself that I found our role in this in the city 
in terms of we are yes we are a restaurant but what is the purpose of a restaurant the purpose of a restaurant is to uh serve people to 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 create memories for them for them to for people look to us to give them uh, happiness and pride you know they, they come to the restaurant not to just be fed they everyone can just buy food anywhere right they come here to be served they come here to forget about their worries for a minute you know so recognizing that role and recognizing that you know there is a general sense of anxiety in the, in this, in the city we started popping out a lot of fun videos of you know uh, our chef dancing and like you know doing things that uh, finding our place in an online world of uh, putting that positive positivity back into the society and uh, back to our customer uh, uh, customers, and that really is, like, people responded really well to that. Um, you know, we had pictures of our plants being watered one day. The other day, we had like you know our chef going outside and dancing with his friend over over video chat. You know, so just finding our place in the city and finding that I think food was food is always secondary to what why people go to restaurants. I think I mean I'm new to the industry, so uh, this is kind of like I'm looking at it from the outside. People come in for that experience, and for us to create that experience outside of here, it's difficult. So we we, we just had to go that direction to find our uh, niche, and you know, with that, people respond responded really well to our Sunday dinners. We started doing family dinners. You know, they wanted that vibe and that atmosphere in their homes, and we, we managed to um, not fully, but to, to a certain level, deliver that to their homes. Hmm. Thanks, Karash. Interesting examples. Okay, I'll have to look up these videos. So. Andrew, um, you know, Korosh just talked about seeing his business as, you know, standing back, what's the role in the community. So I'm curious from your perspective, obviously, CycleSmith has been a long standing provider of bikes and supplies in the in the city. But, you know, how did you morph and and shift the business and, and manage to grow it during this challenging time? Yeah, um, we looked at kind of four things that we learned. Um, and the first thing was preparation. We had to be you know, had the staff trained and things. And, and this isn't something that was, our success wasn't just this year. It's, it started two years ago, that, that type of training and things. And the next one is strong leadership. You know, we had to make tough decisions and we had to make them quick. And that's the only, the only way the staff would follow us is if, hey, look, we know we're going to make a mistake, but you need to make that decision. Don't waffle on it. Um, the ability to move quickly and pivot. Um, you know, so we changed how you could come into our store. We obviously our online sales and things, um, and, and that, that availability to, to pivot our normal online sales was 5%, uh, for three weeks, we went to 50% of our sales online. Uh, and, and now we're continuing at 18% of our sales done online. So we, we really went from a brick and mortar store to an Amazon in three weeks. Uh, and, and so that was that ability to, to move very quickly. We moved four staff from regular sales to literally picking and packing orders and things. Uh, and then the last thing is the re you know, relevance in the marketplace. Um, you, you need to find, you know, to, to Karash's point, you need to find what you do and you need to do it really well. Um, and, and that is and what your marketplace, decide what your marketplace is, you know, Halifax or Atlantic Canada or Canada or North America, whatever it happens to be. And you have to be relevant in that market to, 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 to be successful. Um, you know, and, and our, our sales went through the roof because of all that kind of stuff. Um, our, you know, our service department went up 76%. Our sales total went up 43%, margins up four and a half percent. You know, it's in that online sales now, speaking back to John, uh, you know, our sales now are online sales. We expect it to be in the 15 to 20%. Um, and that's going on to the future as well. So, so now we have a whole e-com department uh, that we've created uh, basically in June and July. And, and, you know, I've invested into that and, and we're, we're going to play in that world as well. Thanks, Andrew. Um, really, again, interesting examples. Um, this is a good segue for my next question, which is when you all reflect on the past and how you've had to adapt in this, uh, these past few months, when you look ahead, perhaps post COVID or continuing on with COVID, do you expect that some of the things you've been changing are likely going to be retained within your business model? Andrew's just rhyming off a few where it sounds like work done a couple of years ago has served well, probably will be continuing into the future. So just curious about the things that um, you'll probably be continuing post COVID that you think will support your business. So we'll start again with Lisa. 
Um, definitely online deliveries. Um, we've discovered customers who didn't know that we existed. People who don't travel very often may not have known that we were at the airport. Um, we've found customers out in Lance uh, and places where, you know, they don't have easy access to go into a liquor store. Um, so we were, they told us that, you know, if we'll deliver to them, then they, they will be customers forever. So that's been a, a tremendous uh, discovery for us and we will continue to to, to do that going forward um, and I guess with the air airlines projecting a hundred and fifty seven billion dollar loss because of the shutdown um, we really need to and we're we're stationary in our location uh, due to the regulators regulations uh, we can't change our location we are in the departures lounge and that's where we need to stay so um, so finding other ways to get out uh, we participated in the chambers golf tournament in october and we just started to meet up with some um, corporate customers so we developed an entire corporate package for holiday gifts and that's been something that we've been focused on for the next little while so that will kind of take us through the, the christmas period and then uh, continue with our online deliveries after that Okay, thanks Lisa. So a uh, couple of good examples there of how this will continue to benefit your business in a strange way moving forward. Karash, any examples of things you see will be continuing well into the future? We will not be doing deliveries. We will not be doing takeouts as much as we like, as much as this is the lifeline of our business right now, mm -hmm. that is not our focus. Once we come out of this, we're going to double down on creating that atmosphere here, creating that energy here. People are going to crave that energy and we're going to be here for them to cater that to that, to that need and uh, double down on, you know, not on, 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 on deliveries. Our model is very different. I cannot wait to go back to reopening. We closed down voluntarily a couple of days before the shutdown was announced because we felt that it's necessary. But all we're going to do over the next few weeks, hopefully not lo longer than uh, three, four weeks, is to stay, uh, you know, alive. But after that, we're going to double down and we're going to create that atmosphere here for people to come here and be prospects of the uh, you know, vaccine in uh, hopefully uh, mid next year. Uh, we just can't wait to, to go back to some normalcy and being able to serve people here, have that energy. I was, I'm, I'm looking at videos of people like, you know, gathering together, having parties, having, you know, uh, all those things that we miss. Mm -hmm. We can be ready. And uh, I think the lesson for me is there are things we cannot lose. And that you know, togetherness and uh, the sense of community and sense of, um, you know, joy is something that places like ours can cater to. Um, but it's, the learning has been that, not necessarily uh, doing online deliveries and, and uh, Right. Fair enough. All right. Andrew, anything that uh, you're seeing that you'll take forward that you've learned? For sure. The, the first thing is understanding how our customer buys. Uh, and, and, you know, as a very technical business and people looking for all kinds of information, we overcomplicated selling a bike. Um, and, and that became very obvious uh, as we started to see all the new customers come in. And, and that growth wasn't from the hardcore people. They were from new, new people into cycling, getting, you know, starting to, to ride a bike, getting outside, that type of thing. And so understanding how they buy, that, that was a huge learning part for us. Uh, the second part is now uh, doing our online data and the mining. Our, our second largest market is Ottawa. Um, and, and, and then the third is Calgary. Uh, and so selling, understanding why they're choosing us, why, what's going on and things. And that, that's the next part. And that's what my e-com department now is working on is, is understanding why are they finding us? How are they finding us? What, what are we doing that someone else isn't doing in their market? Uh, and, and I mean, there are major online uh, bicycle companies out there, um, and now they're coming to us. So what, you know, what's going right and, and, and understanding. And so we can keep doing that and start going after other markets, uh, you know, in, in Canada. Interesting. That's surprising. Who would have thought Ottawa and Calgary, if you had plotted that out, you know, five years ago, would you have expected that? Interesting. Yeah. So each of you have been, you know, giving some good examples of how you shifted and lessons you might take forward. Can I ask, is there anything that you learned, you could call it mistakes, hiccups, stories where you say tried that didn't work you know 
anything micro or macro that you would like to share that might benefit other business owners that are trying to keep trudging ahead? So Lisa, any tales there? Not that I can think of. I guess uh, going back to get, jump into it, get started, and if you make some mistakes, then you can correct them along the way. Um, trying to be too perfect or having a perfect system starting out um, mm -hmm. may kind of trip you up or make it seem overwhelming when it doesn't have to be. Your customers are on your side. Your customers are rooting for you. They really are invested in your success as a business. So if you make a couple of mistakes along the way and you have to reach out to your customer and, and make things right or, um, or, or you know, kind of talk with them along the way until we can fix things up, then your customers are going to be on board for that. And I think that's probably the biggest takeaway that we've had is don't try to make things perfect starting out. Um, your customers will help you along as you go. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a good one, eh? That um, especially in these times and especially in this region, people will hopefully roll with you, know you're trying to shift and hopefully you can build that relationship. And like you said, roll through the imperfections. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good tip. Korosh, any stories, tales, lessons learned? Yes. Uh, it's personal. It's uh, when the pandemic hits and the shutdown happened, as I said, no breaks. We started, uh, you know, switching a model immediately, you know, working 12, out, 12, 14, 15 hour days, you know, getting the menus all set up, uh, making sure the food that was sometimes doing deliveries myself, not having the, uh, at the time we didn't have waste subsidy. We didn't have any of those things, right? So it's putting a lot of personal time in there. I lost track of my, myself and the time that I had to take for myself and my family. And that was definitely a big learning uh, lesson for me that, you know, everybody else was out there. Like, once the trails reopened, you know, they had time to go out there, you know, take care of things at home. None of that for me at that time. This time around, I'm learning that lesson and I'm going to pay attention to my own mental health and my physical health. Mm -hmm. And that's something as business owners, we, uh, you know, we put last. And I really think without that, so much of our doing is, is just not worth it, you know? so. I'm definitely, that was a big lesson for me. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to buy a new bike from Andrew soon and uh, I'm going to get, get back in shape and, you know, lose 20 pounds. So. <laughs> uh, the COVID 20. Yes, that's exactly right. Yes. Actually, Andrew will not like this, but I have a, a cycle Smith bike that's probably 25 years old that I still drive around the neighborhood. My sister worked there actually about 25 years ago. So I'm probably also due to come in this Christmas. So I might see you there, Korash. <laughs> So, so Andrew, over to you. Um, any lessons, mistakes, reflections looking back? Yes, uh, I couldn't agree more with uh, Lisa and Karash. Both were perfect, exactly what I looked at. Um, you know, first, the mistakes. We made a lot of mistakes in the beginning, uh, you know, trying to figure out what to do, how to do it. Uh, and and you just have to manage those mistakes and you know apologize to the customer hey we didn't get the list delivered on time or whatever it happened to be you know and and to Lisa's point they're on your side they want you to succeed but it's just literally manage those mistakes because we made lots of them and and now learn from those mistakes so we're not making those again again mm -hmm. um, and, and time uh, crash I couldn't agree more with your comment uh, I didn't see my family for almost 11 days straight because I literally was working uh, about 14 to 16 hours uh, a day for 11 days straight just to try to get things going and stuff. And it, and it never stopped. Uh, it really went right through until the end of October. Um, and and it's that is the thing I've probably put on 40 pounds uh, this summer because I was literally eating, uh, you know, takeouts all the time and stuff, not making uh, food at home and stuff because I just didn't have time. And, and that is the big thing, you know, family uh, definitely suffered and stuff. And that's one of those things that you have to understand. And, and without that support behind you, it's not going to work. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, it's definitely those two things are the, the two biggest things that, 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 you know, you, I made mistakes at and, and, can't do that again uh, yeah yeah for sure well maybe today the chamber could be a, a connection here uh, maybe we can barter healthy food from Karosh trade it off for you know bike uh, bike parts from cycles <laughs> so I'm watching the time I see we have about three minutes left and um, 
The last question I have is over the past few months, I've been joining Pat Sullivan and others sitting in on these NS Black calls, right, where uh, groups from across the province are coming together to look at labor and business. And of course, much of the time spent there is looking at provincial and federal programs that could support business. So I'm just curious for each of your businesses, you know, have you tapped into any of those government programs? And if so, are there any helpful ones that we'd want to be sure that other businesses are aware of? So Lisa, any in your case? The wage subsidy program has been instrumental in us, in us success, our success. Um, it's one of those things that uh, if, if it hadn't been for the wage subsidy program, we probably would have um, shut down completely, at least for um, the, the immediate uh, period, because there are no flights going. So given our location, the wage subsidy has made a big uh, impact and has allowed us to kind of grow that online business in a sustainable way um, without feeling a, a huge pinch because of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks Lisa. Korosh, what about for your yeah. business? Same thing, if it wasn't because of wage subsidy and then rent subsidy, um, there is no way we would have been alive. We would have been shut down probably by May. Um, and so definitely those two things, um, the, this time around also, you know, when we, we started talking about the layoffs, I did some research and with the new EI programs that are in place, our staff had a soft landing as opposed to last time, not knowing what's going on. Um, so the, I think those, all those three things are great. I really think this is just a comment about, you know, Nova Scotia has done a tremendous job with uh, managing the pandemic, but I really think there could be a lot more done to manage the uh, reopenings. Um, you can have another one coming up. I really hope that there are better programs in place to support the businesses as we go uh, in that direction. And from a city perspective as well, you know, we we're talking about active transportation. Um, last time around, our city was the last one to introduce any sort of active uh, transportation and mobility solutions to get people out of their homes. Um, so I really hope that this time around, we, we go into this, the city is more on board with uh, promoting more active tra transportation. It's good for Andrew's business, but it's good, also it's good for us as well, you know. The cars that are driving by here don't bring us business. The people that are biking and walking here will bring us business. Hmm. Thanks, Karash. And last word to you, Andrew. Did you tap into any government programs? Uh, well, we've been fairly lucky that we haven't had to access any of the, um, you know, subsidies and, and things. So we're actually been very, very lucky. Um, you know, the big thing for us was actually supporting our local businesses in our area during the pandemic, um, whether it was takeout for all of our staff or, uh, you know, we did a fun thing where we, we bought uh, um, candy boxes from Freak Lunchbox for all the staff uh, and, and just got them delivered and everybody loved it for the day kind of thing and, and we're high on the sugar and stuff. But again, it was just supported those local businesses and that's, that's, that's so, you know, so, so important to, to get and help. So, hey, we're doing really well, you know, let's go down to crush and, and, and get takeout and thing. And that those are the kind of things that, you know, for, you know, what John was saying, again, they're spending more money. The economy is still going quite well. And we're lucky in Halifax, it is going quite well. But we then have to, you know, I truly believe share um, our successes um, and, and learn from, you know, what is Karash doing and what is Lisa's business doing and what are other companies doing that we can learn to, to do better um, and, and help each other. We're all in this together. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a fitting way to wrap things up, Andrew, right at 2.30. So that was well scripted. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much, Lisa, Karash and Andrew for taking some time out of obviously your your businesses where every extra hour of sleep or trying to keep your business going is important. So thank you very much. Appreciate your insights and back over to you, Pat. Thank you, thank you very much, Michelle and Karash and Andrew and Lisa. I did notice that we do have a couple of questions in the Q&A. So I encourage Karash and Andrew and Lisa, if you wanna look at those questions, you can type your answers in there just to help out um, as people are kind of curious about how you've been doing uh, and whether with the activities you've had, you've actually been able to kind of uh, maintain profitability and then some of, the, some of the things you've been able to do, let's see, Mark's question, uh, did, you get to, did you get to a place where you could go online with something? Anyway, did you hire a partner, bring in staff, twist friends arms? If you could take a look at those and just perhaps quickly answer them. I think that would be wonderful. Um, you may have noticed everybody that I did 
put up there links to CycleSmith and links to light liquid asset assets and uh, links to Garden Food Bar um, where you can get Christmas gifts uh, or whatever you'd like to get. Um, in fact, if you'd like to get a bike uh, for the remaining days in November, I'm sure Andrew would love to help you out with that. Uh, and uh, Lisa has been my uh, go-to delivery place for uh, little, little bottles of rum. So uh, she knows where to find me. So thank you everybody uh, for, uh, uh, for that today. Let's remember there are so many great local businesses out there. So I would encourage everybody to, to take advantage of them as Andrew has said. You know, if you, uh, if you are doing well, if your business is doing well, let's keep others in mind. Uh, if you're doing okay personally, uh, through some of the support programs that I would encourage you to, again, support some of the local businesses that, uh, that we have. 